in the last two years, we at the Environmental Center have been learning a great deal about what we thought was the most polluted water in New York, and that's the Gowanus Canal uh, here in West Brooklyn, not too far from our headquarters in idyllic Prospect Park. Uh, and it's a place that has some very profound and even historical uh, direct similarities, comparisons with Newtown Creek. Uh, Gowanus Canal was Gowanus Creek, and both of them have been canalized. Um, I don't know that I prefer that, New that Newtown Creek is still called a creek because it's as much a canal as Gowanus Canal. Um, and uh, there's very little uh, reality about, uh, very little it's creek-like about either place. Um, they started as uh, tidal uh, streams coursing through uh, broad wetlands, um, draining large areas uh, upland on this western end of Long Island. And uh, they were filled in. And they were filled in for the same kinds of uses at about the same time in the last half of the 19th century. They were filled in for warehousing and manufacturing of all kinds. Um, and the streams became very valuable waterways. The filled in wetlands became very valuable land because of, they were now accessible by water transportation. Um, the industries in Gowanus Canal were uh, similar in many respects to those in, in, uh, in the creek. They were uh, uh, stone yards, uh, coal yards, uh, later uh, fuel oil and other petroleum products. There were uh, a lot of uh, metallurgy. In, in Gowanus Canal, much smaller plants than the enormous Phelps Dodge plant that developed on Newtown Creek, but uh, metallurgy is amongst the most polluting kinds of industrial activity, and Gowanus Canal had that in spades as well. Environmental quality of the two places followed a very similar role, a very similar path. Um, the, uh, the ecology was totally disrupted by the filling in and uh, the water ecology in particular was affected by the fact that these two transit waterways, um, while connected to the world ocean, both of them flowing directly into New York Harbor, um, they became backwaters. They were intended to be flushed twice a day by the rise and fall of the tide. And that never really worked in either case. Notwithstanding, they were early on used as simply extensions of the sewer system. And as the neighborhoods around them grew, their sewers were routed directly to empty into both waterways. Uh, and still today, even though most of the sewage is treated in both cases, in both watersheds, um, they are both heavily impacted by combined sewer overflows whenever it's raining. Both of these waterways are re receiving a fresh coating of untreated sewage because the flow whenever it's raining is too great for the water treatment plants to absorb. Um, so between that biological load and the chemical load coming from the industries, the impact on the uh, ecology of the place is total. And there are very few of the species surviving that occurred um, in the early times when they were natural creeks. It's our conviction that um, places like Newtown Creek and Gowanus Canal are allowed to exist because of public attitudes and to a considerable degree because of public ignorance. The people who live there around these places today have bought the idea that these places are, are sinks, environmental sinks, a place where you throw things away and anything goes there. Everybody needs to learn the potential for even bringing back what the nature that's been taken away because both places are susceptible to the same kinds of restoration and healing processes. It's possible, believe it or not, 
in Newtown Creek to make it a natural flowing creek again and to bring back the fish and the wildlife and the uh, marsh plants and so on. I honestly think that politicians in New York respond to the public will. If the public will is clear and if it is effectively articulated uh, and if the press picks it up, I think that politicians invariably respond. Uh, these are not easy problems for politicians to respond to. They're, for one thing, they're cleaning the environment is an enormously expensive business. I mean, the cleanup on the Phelps Dodge plant alone is going to cost tens of millions. Um, I don't know yet who's going to pay for that, but uh, that one site is uh, so expensive that it's had to be put on the federal super fund list because it takes super federal dollars uh, to be equal to the task. Um, so politicians, elected officials, agency officials need to know that clearly what does the public want in this regard. Uh, and they'll, they'll go the, the mile necessary to provide it. They'll pass legislation. They'll uh, authorize funds to upgrade sewage treatment plants to, to, uh, to uh, either remove poisoned soil uh, or to detoxify it through uh, um, uh, creative uh, methods of, of planting that, uh, plantings that are adept at extracting toxins from soil and making them available for more beneficial uses afterwards. They'll, they'll pass funds to, uh, to deal with our, our spots of hot pollution, our brown fields. They're not as bad as a Superfund site, but still can't go through development until their, uh, uh, their environmental ills are remediated. An improvement in the water quality by this project I've just described is going to make Newtown Creek a less offensive place to be. I mean, astonishingly, even with its terrible landscape, and believe me, it looks every bit as bad as, as uh, Gowanus Canal, uh, people want to be there. People are invariably drawn to the water's edge in the city, maybe just to get an open view of the sky. Um, and uh, I think more and more people will come uh, if we clean it. Clean it and they will come. And uh, it's time to start now uh, developing some of the public amenity aspects of places like Newtown Creek and Gowanus Canal. Uh, there's no reason at all why we can't have uh, canal side, creek side promenades, why they can't be planted and pleasant to be on. And, and, and willow trees with their fronds bending over and trailing in the waters. And, uh, you know, kids on tricycles and moms pushing strollers and uh, lovers on park benches. It's all possible. And, and kids from the local schools planting flowers and the city keeping it clean and keeping it attractive. These kinds of amenities are not rocket science, right? Simple stuff. Uh, we can take a, a, a branch of either of these waterways, uh, choose the branch of Newtown Creek that has hardly any traffic anymore, uh, where the land is around it is so disused, and uh, start a project to bring back the wetland. See, nature's already doing it. It's astonishing to see some of the wildlife um, occurring in these two places and what is the wildlife doing there? Or, for example, we see fishing birds, waders uh, in there, wonderful birds, herons and uh, um, cormorants. And they're there because the little bait fish that are able to exist on the, the, the thin layer of relatively clean oxygenated water that sits on top of the awful soup that is the rest of both of those waterways. Um, but they're also there because marsh plants are growing in places that have silted in because of the lack of traffic. They've silted in uh, simply with um, the normal process of erosion. 
and these uh, eroded materials uh, build up to the point where uh, marsh plants can set their feet in and emerge above the water and uh, slowly the ecological association of a natural marsh is returning. Well, it's not terribly expensive to accelerate that process. Uh, we can bring in this, Lord knows, you know, we're never wanting in New York for places to put landfill, clean landfill materials, and we can start to um, rejuvenate one of these areas and bring back the, 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 uh, the marsh and, and run our promenade around it uh, and let people see birds and fish and other wildlife and the natural plants that were in Newtown Creek and, and, and Gowanus Creek um, before they became the shame of Brooklyn and Queens. I don't, I don't think that we, we can reverse time. Um, there are, uh, in, industry has changed and the requirements of industry has changed. And we're not gonna bring back the, the booming years of the broad shoulders and the belching smokestacks and guys punching time clocks and punching out those products coming out of the doors of the factories and into barges to be shipped down the Gowanus Canal uh, or the Newtown Creek. It's not gonna come back. Um, and we have to think of creative ways to reuse these industrial sites. Certainly there is and should be room for in industry down around these places. There's every need for jobs in these locations. But uh, we need to find creative ways to reuse these places so that they more directly serve people. Um, where are the people going to come from to push those strollers and to ride those tricycles? There's very little housing immediately adjacent to either of these bodies of water and I'd love to see some subsidized housing and maybe even room for unsubsidized housing. Would, would people pay market rate rents to live on the side of Newtown Creek? You'd be surprised, um, especially if we could um, um, allow them a little dock space and room to have. Uh, we have in, uh, in Brooklyn a place called Mill Basin and I know there are such places on the idyllic north shore of Queens. Um, where there are re is residential development immediately next to navigable water and people can go out their back door and, and out onto a dock and get into their pleasure boat and sail off out into the world ocean if they want to. And um, I think people would pay to be able to do that in these places. And lots of opportunities, I think, for business uh, connected with these kind of social amenities. Lots of opportunities for restaurants and cafes and uh, the kinds of things that would make a trip to the water's edge, uh, prolong it, make it more pleasant. Um, that's what I want, one of these days. I want to be able to come by of a Sunday morning with my New York Times to the edge of Newtown Creek and sit down at a cafe in the shade of uh, one of those flowing willow trees and uh, read my newspaper and contemplate life while the water birds drift past uh, a refreshed and renewed Newtown Creek. They're real places. There's a placeness in either one that's, that's distinct. That each place has a flavor to it. Um, and people who live there, people who visit there, are going to be, there will be an impression that the place makes on them. Uh, I think these are transforming places. Um, in any case, we've got to dream. Well, let's start bringing the people there. Um, let people experience these places. Let them learn the story. And, uh, and, and let, let's get them dreaming, too. Let's especially recruit kids. Let's recruit young people to the idea that these places are not something to be reflexively avoided. Um, they are not merely our shame, but they're also uh, our future and potentially our pride. And that the decisions about these places are going to be made by folk like them. And that they've got to learn now what's possible so that they can work towards their dreams. Um, these places belong to the kids and to the future.